back inside. Go on, honey. No, Malcolm, no, baby. Go back inside. Go, go. That's it. Go, honey. Go, go, go back. Go, baby. Go back inside. Creatures science refuses to recognize. There's something down there! But if our eyes see it, if our cameras capture it, does it exist? Then they're monsters! Lost tapes. Do you believe? Zombie. In February 2010, a vicious murder threatened to ignite a firestorm in one of New Orleans' Haitian communities. Because of unique circumstances surrounding the incident, police enlisted the assistance of the Enigma Corporation, a private security firm. The group was led by Agent Noel Connor and included tactical specialist Elise Mooney and tech operative Tanner Noble, a rookie on the team. Josephine Ledoux, boarding house owner, originally from Haiti, was killed last week by this man, Malcolm Clement, former resident of Miss Ledoux. What's the catch? According to Haitian medical records, Clement supposedly died eight years ago. There's no evidence of insurance fraud, any sort of hoax, mistaken identity, literally unexplainable. So we got a dead man walking. The group's mission was simply to retrieve the suspect, believed to be harbored by residents of the boarding house. But what they found inside was a situation more volatile than anyone had anticipated. These are their tapes. This place has been condemned since Katrina. Expect squatters and transients who could be hostile and harbor inclement we know is extremely dangerous. The plan is this, we go in quietly, we bring Clement into custody and we get the hell out of there. Any questions? Who's watching the perimeter? I got that covered. Motion sensors for the front and the back end. Remote alarm. If anything comes in or goes, we'll know about it. Is that good enough for you? That's all I needed, thank you. All right, ID badges of the suspect. Ready? Let's rock and roll. Hurrah. All right, go. I'll take the back. Copy that. All right, give me a five count. One, two, three. A little faster next time. Okay. Take the right, I'll take the left. Nothing. Clear. Was that you? No. The broadest definition of a zombie is a reanimated corpse, a flesh automaton in which life as we know it, consciousness as we know it, has exited the body. Essentially, the human body has been carjacked by a force that reanimates it. Zombies are relentless. They do not fear, they will not be distracted, they do not tire. Think of a zombie as a biting, consuming, guided missile. The flesh-eating zombie has one motive, to attack, kill, and devour 
human beings. This is a biological imperative. They are a walking virus, just as every virus is genetically programmed to spread. Bites are the most common transferal vector for the virus. If you're bitten, you will be turned. Listen up! Any residents of this building need to come out with their hands on their heads! Let's check the upstairs. Her residence? Voodoo Shrine. Look at that. What the hell? What do you think that is? Drugs? Maybe neurotoxins? Zombie powder is actually a powerful neurotoxin called TTX, which stuns the brain into a death like trance. Tetrodotoxin is a toxin that's found in a variety of different animals, including pufferfish and porcupine fish, that basically blocks nerve function. The first sign that you have of being poisoned by tetrodotoxin is getting a tingling or numbing sensation, and as the poisoning gets worse, then you start to feel paralysis. It can be fatal. Tetrodotoxin is more deadly than the same dose of cyanide. Whatever she was doing, she had some sort of powerful hold on them. Hmm. Clement. Looks like we've got some sort of voodoo altar up here on the second floor. Downstairs is clear. Just a lot of crap. You know, it stinks down here. What the hell? Oh my Check that. I got a homicide down here. Prepare to use deadly force. Over. Whoa. What's up? I got motion outside. No, I got a breach on the rear security. Copy that. Check the sensor, then re-secure the perimeter. I'm on my way up, over. Copy. Careful, team. Copy. Okay, I'm at the stairs. Which room are you in? First room on the right. I'll be right there. This stuff is gnarly. No, you gotta come check this stuff out. Freeze! I said freeze! Ah! Uh, Police! <sighs> Show me what you found in the bedroom. The only way to kill a zombie is technically the only way to kill a human. Destroy the brain. It, it is possible that parts of your brain could uh, cease to function, such as your frontal lobes, while the, the more primitive parts of the brain or the parts of the brain that are in charge of movement uh, could still be functioning. Zombies look like humans. Therefore, the level of decay will determine the age of a zombie. A freshly revived corpse could look very much like a human being, which is one of their most dangerous assets, as they can be mistaken for a live human being.
Hello? Anybody there? Here, this doesn't look too good. Copy that. Restrain her for now. We got a situation up here, so use extreme caution. Over. Copy. <laughs> Not gonna hurt you. Relax. <laughs> Alright, so it just looks like a Ledoux was some sort of voodoo priestess who enslaved all her residents using some sort of neurotoxin. I don't know, I guess maybe Clement got tired of it, rebelled, wanted some revenge. Look, I don't like the feel of this place. Let's just find Clement and get the hell out of here. Agreed. Whoa. Zombies do not obey the conventional rules of other monsters. Most monsters you have to go find. You have to go to the swamp or the desert or the Himalayas to go find a monster. Zombies come to you. The reason we're afraid of monsters is because we've been running from them for most of our evolutionary history. We're not biologically predators. We're biologically prey. And just because we've learned to master this planet doesn't mean that we've forgotten what it was like to be eaten. Stop! 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 ever seen anything like this before? No. I don't know how anybody could bounce back after a fall like that. Stop doing that. No, I got the girl. There's nobody else outside. Listen up, Tanner. We got our hands full. I need you to stay in the van, keep the engine running, and be prepared to get us out of here any second. If you don't hear back from me in four minutes, Call for backup, over. Copy. Stop doing that. Connor, is this even our guy? I don't think so. What? <laughs> New Orleans. 
look, I say we just leave this guy, get the hell out of here, torch this place, and keep whatever is in here from spreading. Look, we were hired to do a mission to bring Clement into custody. That's exactly what we're going to do. We better get doing this fast. I lost contact with him. We got no backup. Any bright ideas? You know, I think we're gonna have to go down the tree out front. Come on. Are you kidding me? Honor, what do I do here? She's just a girl. What do I do? Not anymore. Shoot it. Why won't these people go down? Come on, hold it down. They didn't need him alive. What's it take to kill these guys? Come on, let's get out of here. We've got company. No. No, we gotta hurry this up. Just keep coming. This guy weighs a ton. boarding house owned by Josephine Ledoux was demolished early that same morning. City officials claimed was in compliance with an earlier condemnation notice, but promised there would be a full official report later that week. That report never came. Tanner Noble was given a quiet funeral at his hometown in Laredo, Texas. His co-workers Noel Connor and Elise Mooney were both in attendance. There is still some question as to the fate of Ledoux's remaining residents. Were they still living in the boarding house at the time of its demolition? Or do they live among us? Sista framme. Ja, jag tror det var precis det här. Jag ser ingenting som är vanligt. Det är alltid de här falska alarmen som de håller på med hela tiden. Jag ser, jag ser jag får ingen problem överhuvudtaget med det här. Den där sprickan där, inte... Antingen blir värre, jag tycker jag. Har du ringt efter veckan eller får du ingenting? Ja, precis. Jag är ju så snacka med henne. <laughs> ja, precis. Ja, vill du prata mer med mig eller prata med dig? Ja, eller hur? In your drink, pal. Hon vill, hon vill ha något större. Ja, precis. <laughs> större b***. Vad fan är det för? Vadå? Vad är det? Vad? Det är inte något, man. Det är en reflektion. Seriöst, det är ju någonting där ute. Det ser till att få ljud här. There are creatures science refuses to recognize. There's something down there! 
But if our eyes see it, if our cameras capture it, does it exist? Then they're monsters. Lost tapes. Do you believe? Crack it. In 2006, two workers went missing from the Virtanen offshore oil rig. They were never found. The following spring, a discovery was made near the rig. A Finnish ship of war that sank in 1920 with all hands on deck and a fortune in czarist gold. Deep sea treasure hunter Derek Barrow and his team of experts headed to the Baltic Sea to explore the shipwreck. They brought along documentary filmmaker James Warner to film the adventure. But what Barrow and his team ultimately encountered in the ominous waters was far from the treasure they sought. These are their tapes. Derek Barrow, there's no argument that you're considered to be the treasure hunter of our time, but the world begs to ask, what do you consider yourself to be? Are you more entrepreneur, adventurer, scientist, historian? Uh... A bit of all of the above, really, to be honest. <laughs> all right, let, let me put it this way. The, uh, the Russian ship that we're taking up, are you more interested in the history of the ship or the uh, rumored gold that I, is I tell you what, I tell you what, rather than talking about it, let's just take a look at it. That's where the story begins. Look at that rig. Yes, the oil rig. The, the fill us in about the story there. Uh, the, uh, the oil company were drilling and laying new pipes for some project, and they discovered the wreck of the ship down there, and. I guess that's where I come in. And how do you know there's treasure in this ship? <laughs> well, I could tell you, but I'd have to kill you. No, seriously, I would have to kill you. <laughs> Actually, now that we're talking about it, like I said to you before, you've set up these cameras around the ship and everything, but please don't send anything back to shore before we get back. I really don't need to draw undue attention to this project. Why is that? Well, let's just say that when you've got treasure on board the boat, it's like having blood in the water for sharks. There's pirates around here. Right, piracy. You've had troubles with this before. I think we better go and check in the crew. Come on. The Kraken is a mythological, legendary creature, an awesome sea monster. In the 18th and 19th century, and even before that, such things as whales and octopus and, and squid were basically demonized as, as monsters. Sailors, all of us really attach fear to something we don't understand, the unknown, and the sea was vast. Any place on the map where they, they didn't have it charted, where they didn't show the landmass or anything about the ocean, they just said, here there be monsters. The Kraken, it was believed, its sole purpose was to wreak havoc and destruction on humanity. Kraken was the name for an uprooted tree, and sailors described the Kraken as looking like an overturned uprooted tree with all the roots waving about in the air because they would see all the tentacles. I think that in the wilder seafaring tales, the Kraken was told to be grabbing ships, splintering them like kindling, and then pulling the ship and all aboard down to Davy Jones' locker. So I was thinking, when this is all over, we'll get a little place together. Maybe in Fiji? Why don't you go suit up, Romeo? By the time you're down and up, the winch will be ready. You can do it in two. No, 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 I'm gonna do it in one. Brad, you'll be down too long. Your nitrogen levels, they're gonna go through the roof. No. It's crazy. I always do it in one. I'm going to do it this in one, okay? So don't you worry about That's it. That's stupid. Hey, 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 what's going on? What's going on? He wants to do it in one dive. You've got to do it in two. There's not enough. So he's got a hundred times the dive hours you've got, so I'm going to go with Brad's opinion. Sorry. Oh. Brad, what was that? Sasha, check the running for damage. You up front, look for debris. Some of the most frightening aspects of the Kraken, of course, is the, its aggressive nature in which it really fears nothing. It is the king of the sea. In the Jules Verne classic, 
it's actually compared and shown as if this animal is picking out certain ships, hunting for those ships, remembering them. After all, if this giant has one of the largest bodies for an invertebrate, it also has the largest brain. If you're a puny little human in the ocean with something that weighs over two tons, has 24 to 40 foot tentacles the size of a man's arm equipped with tooth suckers and it gets a tentacle around you you're probably not going to stand much of a chance of survival it's now five hours since the collision we're still not sure what we hit although the captain believes it was some debris either way the ship seems to be in good shape and we're now currently anchored above the wreckage dive specialist brad downing is preparing to make his first descent all right, let's do this. Brad, you good to go? Get in there. All right, connecting the winch, radio test. Ron, you getting this? Check. Come on, we can watch this from below. Approaching a water depth of uh, 50 meters here. Visibility of about five meters. If you guys could see this, the whole center of the wreckage, it, it's crushed like a beer can. It looks like it's from water pressure, but we're not deep enough for that. Whatever it hit, or hit it, it must have been pretty powerful. Yeah, copy. As soon as Brad attaches the winch, then we'll begin bringing the treasure up. What the hell is that? Are you guys seeing this? Uh, no, Brad, the water's too murky. Uh, what can you see? I don't know. It's some kind of... Suiting up. See if you can fix that winch from up here. Arrow. If he's trapped down there, we both know I'm the person to go down and get him. Brad, can you hear me? Brad! Some squid species are aggressive and have formidable weaponry. They can shoot ink and confuse a predator. Bioluminescence is also used as a defense strategy. Their own body is able to produce light through bacteria that they harbor in a chamber in their body. The kraken has a parrot-like beak that it can use to grasp its prey and to tear flesh. The beak is a really powerful biting uh, organ and that beak can deliver a very very nasty bite and that could be a fatal attack Captain Barrow estimates that dive specialist Brad Downing's air will run out within an hour and has made the decision to send Sasha Porsis on a risky night rescue dive 
listen Sasha, you're my eyes down there. So I want you to be careful, all right? And if there's a decision to be made, I'm gonna make it. Have you got that? I've got it, Barrow. I'll be fine. Don't worry. Let me get down there and find Brad. Think good thoughts, Jimmy. Run! You stay guard up there. I'm gonna check in Sasha from below. Barrow believes that Sasha only has minutes to get Brad and bring him up, assuming he's still alive. Hey, Barrow. Next time, you find a wreck. Can you find it in Hawaii? It's somewhere nice. This water is creepy. Hey, listen, you've just passed the 35 meter mark, so you're about halfway, okay, love? That's not blood. That's some kind of ink. I mean, his rib cage has been crushed. What was that? I have no idea. And there's nothing I can do for him now. It's Sasha I'm worried about. If she doesn't come up soon, I'm gonna have to go down there. That means you'll be up here by yourself. Then you can handle that. Sh sure. Stay calm. Barrow, what are you doing? So we'd be calling the Coast Guard or something? I really think you should call the Coast Guard. It's not a boat. What is it? I don't know, but it's coming right for us. Raise yourself! I think it's gone under the boat. Sasha! Get around to the back, get this thing, come on. Jimmy, get the medical kit. She might be hurt. Sasha! Sasha, thank God you're okay. Did you see Brad? What is it? What did, what did you see? Brad's dead. Brad. There's something down there. What's down there? I don't know what it is. What did you see? I don't know. Sasha! What was that? It's gone under the boat. Do you see 
see anything? No, I, I don't see anything. That was a giant, giant squid! Treasure! No, look out! No! I got you. Beryl, what are we gonna do? We're like sitting ducks out here. following day, a ferry heading to the oil rig spotted floating debris. It was all that remained of the sunken research vessel Donna Gale. Captain Derek Barrow was found clinging to a small raft from the boat. He refused to speak of the incident and never returned to the sea again. No treasure or any other of the crew members were ever found. Deep in the hidden darkness of the ocean's depths, Scientists continue to discover a vast array of new species, leaving us to consider, are these rumored monsters of the sea purely legend, or do they live among us? got no game. You know they used to call me the human highlight, right? Human highlight of what? Come on, man. That's a joke, man. Oh, man. <laughs> right here. So what's up for this weekend? I don't know. I think we go into town, man. grab a couple beers, a couple women. You, you know, know what? I would love to get out of here this weekend, man. Is that Santos? What the hell? Are you kidding me? Santos! Wake up! Santo! <laughs> Did he fall asleep at the wheel? Hey, yo! Santos! Wait, is he okay? He, he ain't moving, man. Dude, gas leak! <laughs> Guys, hurry, hurry! Creatures science refuses to recognize. There's something down there. But if our eyes see it, if our cameras capture it, what is it? does it exist? Then the monsters. Lost tapes. Do you believe? Stragoy Vampire. August 2010, the Palico Oil Company lost all contact with its remote drilling encampment in the New Mexico desert. It was unclear if the employees had become victims of toxic gas, radiation, or even a terrorist strike. Taking extreme caution, Palico contracted the Enigma Corporation, a private security firm to investigate. Team leader Noel Connor and specialist Elise Mooney were joined on the mission by two Enigma scientists, Dr. Naomi Robeson and Dr. Selden Fisher. 
Though the team was equipped for a multitude of potential hazards, including a possible hostile encounter, what they actually discovered at the encampment was far more dangerous than anything they had prepared for. These are their tapes. How are we doing on levels, Robson? So far, so good. How about gas? Negative. We should be okay. That's the office up ahead of us. Use caution. This place is like a ghost town. You guys ready? Looks like everybody went on a smoke break and never came back. Whatever happened here happened before anybody can make a call. Got a dial tone. All right, let's move on. Sir, are you all right? Sir. All right, check him out, Doc. Let me see what the body can tell us. Tissue degeneration could indicate possible cardiac arrest. Whatever the cause, his condition suggests he died quickly, a minute or less, perhaps. Biological or chemical agents could have done this. I'm gonna go check out the rest of the office. Copy that. Who get a blood sample for toxicology? Hmm. This is odd. What? This man has been relieved of a considerable amount of blood. Where did it go? The broadest definition of a vampire is that it is an entity or a person, living or dead, who takes your life force. Of the many reported encounters of the vampire, one of the earliest is with the Strigoi, the Romanian version of the vampire. Strigoi have one intent in mind, and that is to sustain themselves, to feed. Like a tick, they, they fill themselves with blood. They would have to have characteristics that would allow them to feed as constantly as they needed to. That would involve shape-shifting, invisibility, speed, overpowering strength. The Strigoi are by nature dangerous.
on, guys. Her mask has been compromised. She's exposed. What? You said the time of exposure to the time of death was about a minute. Correct. It's been about that. She's not showing any signs. I don't think it's airborne. I don't share in your sentiment here. Different strokes, Doc. She looks fine. All right, let's find that rat and test it, Fisher. See if it can give us any answers. This isn't making any sense. We ruled out radiation, we ruled out poison, we ruled out viral infection, but something had to have killed those guys. Well, I don't think it's biological. Well, we need to find some answers in the past. Shape-shifting is common in nature. You see all different kinds of insects moving from pupa, transforming into some other kind of shape as an adult. You can see tadpoles that look almost like fish transforming into a land creature, a frog. This trigoi can turn into any number of creatures. They can turn into rats and snakes and things of this nature. They can also turn into a couple of domesticated animals, any kind of animal that will allow it to draw close to its victim, not in their true form, but as a dog or a cat. A domesticated animal, even if it is a stray, is more likely to be invited in. Looks like these guys went down mid stray. Yeah, it does. What do you make of this? Looks like a weapon of some kind. Fisher, I need you to draw some blood. Done. Same as before. Connor. What the hell? If that dog's been hanging around this camp, I want to test it too. I'll try and hit it with a trank dart. Inside the container. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Shoot, shoot. Wait, back off. That's far enough. Oh, thank God. Oh, thank God. Who are you? I'm Weber. I'm, I'm Clint Weber. I, I work here. Hey, Robson, Fisher. You got a live one. Oh, thank God. Thank God you're here. No radiation. Vitals are fine. I told you guys, I'm fine. And maybe you can tell us what happened here. Look, I don't know, okay? They started off like every other day. We had a routine morning with maintenance checks. Everything was fine. The compound was fine. And then um, right before lunch, there was this... Uh, this dust storm that came out from the plains, but it didn't look normal. It was like this orange dust cloud. And I mean, within like 30 seconds, it completely covered all of us. It was like someone just threw a blanket over us. I thought my lungs were gonna explode. And 
didn't know after it passed, and God only knows why. I don't know. I was the only one left alive. I want you two to conduct a full examination. Don't let him out of your sight. Look, I don't really think I'm the problem here. I survived. I'm not a threat. Well, you got the golden ticket, Weber. You survived the unsurvivable. We may not be so lucky. Liz. You good? Yeah, I'm good. I'm not buying a story. I mean, come on, Connor, an orange dust cloud. And by the way, that Weber guy, really creeping me out. Let's see what else we can find on this guy. See if you can find some personnel files. Engineer, been with Palico for three years, married to children. There's nothing out of the ordinary on here. Is there a picture profile, uh, photo ID? Working on it. Oh my God. Connor, look. If this is the real Weber, then that guy out there had something to do with this. We're in trouble. Get the van here. We need backup now. Open your mouth, please. Huh. Open. What the hell? Is that a train door? Text. They're not coming. They're putting us under quarantine until the nature of the virus can be determined. There is no virus. These people were murdered. Oh my god, Robeson and Fisher. We gotta go. Wait, 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 wait. Is that Fisher? as you can to the supply shed. If the biologists are still alive, get them to the company truck. If I'm not there when you get there, leave without me. What? No, Connor, I'm not leaving without you. At least just go.
she sustained severe injuries after losing control of the vehicle, Elise Mooney narrowly escaped her close brush with death at Silver Rock, aided by fellow agent Noel Connor, who also survived. Dr. Naomi Robeson and Dr. Selden Fisher were not so fortunate. The Palico oil disaster and resulting fatalities were all officially attributed to a poisonous gas leak, and the subsequent scandal forced the company to dissolve U.S. operations. Traces of animal fur and saliva collected by authorities were seized by the FBI, but no lab results have been made public, leaving a vital portion of the mystery unanswered. What other unreported elements were in play to cause a disaster of this magnitude to occur? And do they live among us? for grandma and grandpa want to say anything yeah get out you're not doing anything you're just emailing on your stupid computer no i'm not emailing on my stupid computer if i was emailing then you wouldn't see my mouth moving like this get out why do you hate me so much well that would take all night get out of my room fine then i hate you too oh my god you're such a freak i'm not Creatures science refuses to recognize. There's something down there. But if our eyes see it, if our cameras capture it, does it exist? Then they're monsters. Lost tapes. Do you believe? Poltergeist. In May 2005, the Golden family moved into the house of their dreams in the sleepy suburban town of Lakeview, Colorado. But those dreams were soon shadowed by unexplainable occurrences that seemed to surround their son, Troy. After Troy's sister, Megan, was nearly crushed by a falling bookcase, Mark and Jen Golden decided they could no longer close their eyes to the growing danger. Unsure of where to turn, they reached out to parapsychologist Dr. Jeremy Reinhold and agreed to be filmed for his television series. What Jeremy and his team eventually encountered, however, went far beyond the explainable. These are their tapes. Lakeview, Colorado. The parents of 11-year-old Troy Golden believe their son is exhibiting powers of telekinesis. Harmless enough, until he allegedly tipped a bookcase onto his sister without actually touching it. My team and I have come here to determine whether these powers are real, and if so, how Troy can learn to control them. I'm Dr. Jeremy Reinhold, and we investigate the paranormal. Why don't you start out by telling us when the activity surrounding Troy started? Well, I'd say it's what when we moved into the house pretty much about four years ago and then there was the incident with megan yes no that was that was pretty huge yeah so that's why we that's why we called you it's, you know I, I i just don't want my kids to be in danger of course Ooh, but troy is a really good boy he's he's wonderful he's never hurt his sister before oh we understand your fear and concern for your children but we are confident with our experience we can determine what type of activity it is in this house I think probably the best thing for us to do now would be to probably talk with Troy directly, if that's something you'd be comfortable with. 
And you'll find out the situation with the bookcase. Because that's, that's it. That's, I cannot have my kids hurt. I love my children very much. And I, whatever. Yeah, we, please, it's fine to try to try. We're, whatever, whatever we can do to help. Great. The term poltergeist is German for noisy spirit. Poltergeists are more often felt heard and smelled rather than seen. Some of them are mischievous. They like to play jokes and pranks. Others are downright malicious. They can cause physical pain, nightmares, severe psychological upsets, and that can escalate over time to increasingly violent acts. Hey, Troy, check this out. It's a thermal image camera. It'll record your body temperature. Pretty cool, right? <laughs> Okay, Troy, I want to see if you can do something for me, okay? I just want you to look at this pen and try and move it without touching it. I told you I can't do that. I'm not a freak. No one said you were a freak. I mean, look at me. I've got wheels for legs. I'm not a freak. And even if you could do it, Troy, we wouldn't think that about you, okay? Everything is still reading normal. Okay, so let's just try it one more time. Just look at the pen. I told you I can't do that. Well, thermal image is way hot, and I just got a spike of EMF. Troy, how did you do that? I don't know. When I get mad, weird stuff just happens. Telekinesis is the ability to move or to affect objects with the mind. It has been reported in occult, paranormal, and metaphysical lore for centuries. A more recent term for it is psychokinesis. Some parapsychologists attribute the work of the poltergeist to RSPK, recurrent spontaneous psychokinesis. Psychokinesis being mind over matter, teenagers, adolescents, have extra psychic energy is kind of bottled up inside. So the theory is that poltergeists are projected out from these people. There seem to be a lot of correlation between the experience of poltergeist-like phenomenon and highly emotional states in human beings, especially emotions like anger. When Troy became agitated, we saw a clear example of true telekinetic abilities. The Goldens have given us permission to set up surveillance cameras in Troy's room. That way we can observe him overnight. Our intention of showing you this surveillance footage was not to frighten you. The knife was in his bed. It, it doesn't, we don't even have a knife that looks like that. I, I don't know how this could be happening. How, how is this happening to my son? What we know at this point is that whatever is causing the activity in the house it is very aggressive and it's connected to the emotions of your son. What we'd like to do is remove Troy from the equation and see if we can pinpoint exactly what's causing all of this. You had mentioned that you had sent Megan to your family's house. We think that it would be a good idea for the both of you and Troy to spend the night there tonight as well. Okay. Yeah, sure. Okay. Inside the house, we're currently setting up surveillance cameras to capture any anomalies, audio equipment to detect any electronic voice phenomena. Then we're gonna clear the house, rig ourselves with cameras, 
and then Christy, Schatz, and I are gonna spend the night alone. No crew. Paranormal investigators use a variety of equipment, such as cameras to capture orbs or balls of light seen in photographs, electromagnetic field meters indicating ghostly energy. The paranormal, by its very nature, defies scientific exploration. The phenomena can't be run through controlled tests. It's spontaneous, it's capricious, it's highly subjective. Some of the most frightening things about poltergeists is their unpredictability. Sometimes you don't even know why you're under attack. You don't know when the attacks are going to occur or what they're going to involve or how to defend yourself against them. Okay, are we set? Yeah. Yep. All right, Shots and I are gonna go check out the rest of the house. Christy, I need you to stay downstairs and monitor audio frequencies for any EDP. Are you cool? I'm cool. All right, if anybody gets anything, just holler. All right, let's do this. All right. Anything? Nothing. Not getting much in here. Uh, 0 0.01, that's about it. Christy, we're gonna check upstairs. Sounds good. I'll see if I can pick up anything from the lower frequencies. Still nothing. Pretty clear. Picking up on something over here. I just got a huge spike of EMF. Troy's room. getting stronger over here by the closet. There's definitely something going on in here. Shots? Are you all right? Did you slam the door? I, I didn't touch the door. Whoa. What's back there? What the hell? We gotta get downstairs. Christy, check out what we found upstairs. Did you guys hear that? Hear what? Here. Leave? That's what I heard too. It's all starting to make sense. Check this out. Lakeview, Colorado, 1985. Charles Weatherly, 25, is the prime suspect in the brutal knife slaying of his wife and children. Authorities believe Weatherly took his own life in the aftermath of the shocking incident. The address is this house. I don't think Troy's had anything to do with this. There is a strong presence here. So what are we gonna do? What's the plan? Try to make contact with whatever this force is 
and find out if it's this guy, Charles. And if it is? We gotta get him to leave. There are many ways to get rid of a poltergeist, and depending on the culture you're in, you would seek out different sorts of expertise. In the West, parapsychologists are consulted, sometimes even psychologists and medical professionals. Uh, religious authorities might be consulted, people who specialize in exorcisms. Many cultures have people skilled in the magical arts who can identify these spirits, see them, perhaps even communicate with them, and use various rituals and instructions for banishing them from an individual's life. It is now 3 a.m., the hour in which paranormal activity is typically at its highest. We are now going to attempt to make contact with the presence in this house in order to draw it out. Charles Weatherly, if that's your name, give us some kind of a sign. Come on, Charles. Show us what you got. No, nothing. Uh, I guess it was my reflection in the window. Man, you're gonna kill me with that. Guys, he's here. What's going on? Let her go, Charles. Stop this. Stop it now. This is crazy, Jeremy. We gotta get out of here. No, we're not leaving. This is a battle of wills. It's us against him. Chrissy, Chrissy, can you hear me? We're out of here, Jeremy. No, no, we can't leave. We can't let him win. You do not win, Charles. You hear me? Jeremy, you gotta see this man. Where's my inhaler? Charles, you win. The deaths of Christy Johns, Bill Cooper, and Jeremy Reinhold were attributed to coronary arrests. The episode of their series never aired. Shortly after the events of June 11, 2009, the Goldens sold their home. 
Colorado real estate law did not require them to disclose any of the activity that had occurred. Over two billion people believe in the existence of ghosts and poltergeists. But are these spirits confined to the unseen world of the afterlife, or do they live among us? <laughs> So, I invited Rachel to our game on Saturday. She's gonna no, come with Sarah. No, you didn't. Yeah. No, but what if I mess up or something? It's all That's good, terrible. Man. Don't worry about that. No, man. What do we got here? It. Check this out, man. Hello? Whoa. Anybody here? Dude, what you're are you doing? Owen. You got gasoline right here? Come on, man. We should go. The trail's way back there. We're gonna Relax, make... man. Quit being such a chicken. What are you, five? Matt's a chicken. Please, <laughs> stop. Dude, wait. Live a little bit. Yo, come on, check this out, dude. Looks like a still. A still? Yo. This is great. Dude, this is illegal. This is perfect. If they find us in here, man. We can bring some chicks up. We got food, we no, got we should just get going. Amazing. <laughs> Seriously, let's go. No, let's go. 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 But if our eyes see it, if our cameras capture it, does it exist? Them, they're monsters! Lost tapes. Do you believe? Devil Monkey. <clears throat> this is Stacy Foster with WGLOK. In April 2009, West Virginia reporter Stacy Foster accompanied ATF agents Ollie Moy and Mark West, along with local law enforcement officer Ernest Tybee, on a moonshine raid in the Appalachian Hills. You have to catch the shiners red-handed with the finished product. You can't just bust somebody for having, you know, sugar and grain. Yes, they've relocated since last time we were after them, but they're about to move out all of their gear. Be prepared for a lot of stuff, you know, a lot of danger. We got uh, booby traps or the guard dogs or armed moonshiners. So, yeah. Booby traps? Yeah. Really? Pretty much seen it all. Now poised to move in and catch the moonshiners red-handed, the team instead would face something of an entirely different nature, one that was far more deadly. These are their tapes. Y'all see that? What the hell did that? Oh, what is that? Is that a claw mark? Well, well, you're the wildlife expert, Tybee. You tell us. You got me. I mean, there's a lot of game out here with claws like this, but not with this kind of fur. That's strange. Boys and girls, that looks like fresh blood to me, so whatever did that is still close by. I suggest we stay. What was that? I don't know, but I think we're being watched. 
The devil monkey is a legendary creature most often cited in the United States Appalachians. They're said to be compared to a giant baboon, but indeed, it's unlike any baboon or monkey that you've ever known. The devil monkey is approximately four to six feet in height. It has long, powerful arms, deep set eyes, covered with matted fur. It tends to, to hunch itself down and propel itself forward, sometimes 20 feet in a shot. They're called devil monkeys because they act like little devils. They act very mischievously, but they're also very aggressive. So far, we've been hiking for about 35 minutes, making our way towards the Moonshiners' camp. We've been hearing some strange noises, and the ATF agents think it may be the Moonshiners warning each other. I hope not, so we can still catch them and make the bust. Why? Why? Oh, would you look at that? Is that one of those booby traps you were telling us about earlier? Well, this is just an alarm. But as Officer Tybee was explaining earlier, the moonshiners have been known to use serious booby traps. Uh, barbed wire, spike boards, rig shotguns. So we need to be very careful. We need to keep our eyes peeled. The next one of these up there could be dangerous. Everybody got that? Yes, sir. Let's move forward. Move carefully, people. Watch your step. Who tripped the line? Stacy? No. What in tarnation? I think it's fresh. It's the wrong shape to be a bobcat. It's too small to be a bear. I'll say. Well, if it's not a bear, what the hell kind of other animal is it going to be? That's a good question. I thought I knew all the tracks out here. Let's go. <laughs> Here it is again. All right. What this is, is the moonshiners obviously trying to scare us. Okay? Well, it's working. Come on, let's move forward. Let's go. Devil monkeys are certainly deadly creatures. They often have the skill and strength of known primates, but they're also combined with the mystery and terror of a creature that really are only known in legends. One of the reasons that chimpanzees are such great predators is that even though they're large in size, they can go very quickly and agilely in the trees as well as on the ground. They can really move quickly and swing through, run on branches, and capture their prey. They have huge canines and a powerful jaw, and once they've grasped on with their canines, then it would be impossible to get away. They usually attack the face or tear off the most vulnerable extremities. That means fingers, toes, facial features, genitals. So it can be a really ugly attack. All of the known primates have incredible upper body strength. If you translate that to a devil monkey, you're in for a hell of a time. is a doozy. I guess I owe you one, Mr. West. <laughs> Let's go ahead and disable that trap so no one gets hurt. My pleasure, Ollie. Thank you very much.
steady boys. Stacy, you might want to step back there to touch. ATF agents, freeze where you are. Thank God. Don't move. Rise up on your feet, son. Rise up on your feet with your hands in the air. Okay, okay. okay. Put your hands in the air. Okay. Rise up slowly. Okay, okay. Calm down. Wait, wait, wait. What's your name? Matt. Please, God, we have to go. The killers, they're after us. They're monsters. This kid looked pretty banged what, up. Why, what are you just standing there for? We have to go. We have to go. This kid is going to let the whole world know where we are. If no, we're right. here. We can't take him with us. What do you suggest? We can't compromise please, the mission. No, we have to go. We have to go. Please, come on. Calm down. What are you doing? Calm down. Calm down. Calm down. Be calm, they're okay? out there. They're following it. They're we killers. We to pick you up, okay? Just what? Calm down. No. What do you calm mean? Down. You can't calm, leave okay? me here. Let's get a move on, boys. Please, we have to go. We have to go. We have to go. They're following me. They're dangerous. Stay together. Oh, Don't go. Don't leave me here. Wait. I think the primary reason the devil monkeys attack people are because they're threatened. Their territory is threatened. They find it as their major means of putting distance between themselves and humans is to let people know, if you don't move on, I'm going to attack you. I'm going to kill you. Indeed, devil monkeys are very dangerous creatures. They're strong, they're fast, they're really intelligent. And from what I've heard, they're extremely resourceful. You don't really want to wander into the forest of a devil monkey. It may be the last thing you ever do. All right. As moonshine camps go, this is a pretty well-established operation. You can see you've got a really nice well-defined still right here. You've got your supply barrels here. You've got bunk tents in the perimeter. There's a supply tent across the way there. Gentlemen, our first position is going to be at the supply barrels. Are we ready? Let's go. What about me? You'll be fine. Just stay next to Ty B. And keep that camera ready. In a few minutes, we'll have a couple of bad guys for you to film, and we can all go home, all right? Let's go. Tidy, cover us. Gotcha. Let's go. What the hell happened here? This camp looks like it's been ransacked and torn apart. This is the Alcohol Control Board. We have you surrounded. Come out with your hands up. got something over here. You might want to take a look at it. What is it? Not sure. Damn place looks like there was a last stand or something. Who's out there? Agent West, do you copy? Tidy, cover me. What is it? What the hell's going on? Looks like one of our moonshiners. He's seen better days. Why didn't you answer me? Something hit me from behind. I turned around and there was nothing. Look at all these all over the place. Looks so just like what we saw down the trail. Let's see if they like it. Come on, let's get a move on. Yeah. 
Sam. Jeez. More blood? This place is all Toro. I ain't never seen anything like this. They're on the run. Ty B, cover the front of the still. We're going around back. Copy that. Nothing. We just heard him. Tybee, move in and secure the still. Oh my God. Let's just calm down. Oh my God. that followed, authorities recovered the remains of Stacy Foster and all the other members of the operation. Their bodies were severely mauled and could only be identified through DNA and dental records. Matt Jones survived the ordeal and issued a statement to authorities about what he encountered that night. West Virginia lawmakers have since assembled a team of zoological experts to investigate unusual wildlife activity in the area. Though it was clear the attacks were committed by some type of mammal, key questions still remain. What species native to Appalachia could have inflicted such massive damage? How many are there? And do they live among us? <sighs> received an exclusive recording of what may be the last moments of life for billionaire explorer Mark Hordstrom. The famed adventurer went missing two weeks ago while on a trek in the Himalayas. Rescuers have been attempting to reach his camp for days, but a massive snowstorm has caused delays. 
Here now is what may be his final distress call, which could show evidence of a possible attack. Warning, this may be disturbing to sensitive viewers. Mayday! Mayday! This is Mark Hornstrom. I'm radioing from Satellite Camp 3. Is anybody copy? Hello? Is anybody there? I request immediate assistance. Two of my teammates are missing. We found something. Something big. It attacked us in the storm. I think... I think it's... I think it's outside right now! Is anybody there? Please! Please, I need help! Oh my god! Creatures science refuses to recognize. There's something down there! But if our eyes see it, <laughs> if our cameras capture it, what is that? does it exist? Them, they're monsters! <laughs> Lost tapes. <laughs> Do you believe? <laughs> Yeti. In March 2005, renowned explorer Mark Hordstrom disappeared while on an expedition to Mount Everest. Three years later, amidst media frenzy, his remains were discovered and returned to the States along with what his rescuers claimed to be a major discovery. Two journalists, Jared Slate and Alex Turner, were determined to break the story early. Behind me is the cargo ship, the Inventus, which we think holds the frozen remains of the famed adventurer Mark Hordstrom, who went missing in the Himalayas under mysterious circumstances years ago. Now, in addition to Hordstrom's remains, there's been talk of another major discovery to be announced at a press conference in the days to come. To get the exclusive story, Slate and Turner bribed longshoremen Charlie Newhouse to sneak them aboard the vessel a day before the press conference. What they encountered, however, was a story more violent than they ever imagined, and a legend they never expected. These are their tapes. Where the hell have you guys been? You're supposed to be here two hours ago. Yeah, well, it was a little harder to get on the docks than we had anticipated. Security's really tight. Come on, new house. You're not going soft on us, are you? Come on. Watch out for the guard. Keep quiet and follow me. Nothing more than I've already told you. They're up in the mountains, found something. It's supposed to be a big deal. You know, they brought it back with them, and they're keeping it in cold storage. I got access to parts of the boat, but they didn't tell me anything. I've been working with these guys for years for next to nothing. As soon as they found out they could make a buck off it, they cut me right out of the loop. One of the most famous of all cryptids or unknown animals is the Yeti, 
the fabled abominable snowman of Nepal and Tibet and Bhutan. The Yeti is said to be very powerfully built with a man-like build, except bigger, more muscular, seven to seven and a half feet tall, usually covered with dark brown matted hair. In the case of the Yeti, it is part of the culture, it is part of the superstition and belief, but it's also part of the geographical landscape. You can't talk about Nepal, you can't talk about the Himalayas without probably the most famous animal rumor to live there. The Nepalese who live in those areas and, and the Sherpa who are hired by mountain climbers consider it to be a dangerous natural animal that will carry off humans if it gets a chance to. better hurry this up. Oh, bloody hell, what happened here? Yeah, we put poison out for the rats, keep them from getting into stuff. That doesn't look like poison. These rats were ripped apart. Oh, my God. It's probably just some equipment shifting. <sighs> keep it together, Slate. in this section. It's right up here. Hey, hey, hey. Alex, this must be Oldstrom. Quick, give me the crowbar. Machine accident. We gotta get out of here. We gotta call the cops. Look at this. Biological specimen. This must be a big discovery, some kind of animal. Why would an animal be a big discovery? I don't know. Guys, do you hear me? We gotta get out of here. We gotta call the cops. See anything? Whoa. What is it? The whole crate back here has been busted open. Definitely an animal of some kind. I think Jane Goodall and other primatologists would agree that there are still undiscovered primates that exist that we haven't found yet. Even in the 21st century, there are primates that come to light that we didn't know of until just recently. There was a new lemur discovered in the forests of Madagascar about 10 to 15 years ago that was unknown. So you know, even in the modern world, there still are relatively unexplored places. The Himalayas are an extremely harsh habitat for humans to travel in and do research in. You have high snow cover and ice, and so digging for any kind of fossils would be extremely difficult. We're talking about relatively few creatures in a large, unexplored, and largely uninhabited area that's very hostile to humans. So you have sort of a perfect storm of factors to help keep this creature hidden from man. Whatever was in there is now out here with us. God, it's gotta be huge. Yeah, no kidding. What the hell is that? Is there someone else in here with us? No. The instructions were explicit. Nobody on the side of the ship. We got company. Well, that's our animal. We should go find it. 
Oh, are you out of your mind? What? This isn't worth it anymore. I got a family to take care of. I'm leaving. Y'all can go with me or not. I don't care at this point. I'll leave you here in a heartbeat. Do you coming or what? Yeah, we're coming. Yeah, we're coming. Sweet. It's not worth it. He's right. If we don't get something tangible tonight, we're going to be like every other schmuck at that press conference tomorrow. We've already had something tangible. Come on. If we break the story a day early, think about it. Okay. Okay. At new house. Are you in? Hell no. Come on, man. I'd, no, I'd rather be a schmuck than be a corpse. New house. You're on your own. We don't need him, Slate. We can find it without we him. We do need him. He knows it well. New house. Charles! We can find it without him. Let him go. Oh, great. All right, come on. Get one shot of it, okay? It, all we have is a bunch of bloody footprints. It's gonna look like we staged it. Oh, look at me, I promise. Just one shot and then we'll go, okay? I promise you. I'll okay, get one more shot. And then that's it, and then we're getting out of here. I promise. All right? Oh my God. Any animal if cornered, if trapped, if faced with either their survival or their freedom, is going to turn and fight. Yetis certainly have been described as upwards of 400 to 800 pounds. They're seen as a massive creature, huge muscles with a height that really gives them a lot of advantages, whether it's they're dealing with humans or yaks or other creatures. So they seem to be formidable. They seem to really be something that people do not want to tangle with. Oh, my God. 
In the hours that followed, the press conference scheduled to announce this major discovery was abruptly canceled, leading to rumors of government interference. The remains of Charles Newhouse, Alex Turner, and Jared Slate were never recovered. Though this newly leaked video evidence would suggest otherwise, their deaths were all officially listed as drownings. The vessel Inventus was redirected to Plum Island, a government facility known for biological research. For centuries, natives and adventurers have shared legends of ferocious beasts that roam the Himalayas. But the Inventus incident raises a more controversial query. Are these legends confined to the remote corners of our Earth? Or do they live among us? fish in there. Oh they're, oh, they're in here. They're waiting, they're waiting for me. They're, you see? We're just being picky. We're I'm being so picky. Hungry. We don't want that one or that one. Oh, here, you can have this. Friend. Where'd you get that? I saved it. I didn't eat it. No, I don't want that. It's yours. No, eat April, it. I'm serious. You can have it. If you're not feeling good, I want you to have it. Okay? Okay. Okay, Thanks. Okay, where are the fish? Don't see any. You are not oh, seriously going to cook that. I don't have any choice. Dude, we're lost. But we're not animals. Go get it out of here. Get it out. Guys, it's been days and we don't have any food. I'm not gonna eat that. No. Turn that thing off. science refuses to recognize. There's something down there! But if our eyes see it, if our cameras capture it, does it exist? Them, they're monsters! Lost tapes. Do you believe? Wendigo, American Cannibal. Okay, guys, this is what we got. In September 2009, a search and rescue team was dispatched to locate four inexperienced campers lost in the Appalachian wilderness. The team was assembled by lead evaluator Shelby Nash and included veteran tracker Porter Voss and paramedic Trent Dorsey on his first rescue effort. They entered the woods approximately two weeks ago for a spring break camping trip, and when they didn't return on Monday to Homer school, we were called. 
What do we know about them? We know that they're college age. We know there's two girls and two boys, and we have pictures so that we can identify them. How about first aid experience? To my knowledge, they have no first aid experience. Okay. Any other questions? I got a full kit. I'm ready to go. All right. Let's move. Though the team was prepared for almost any eventuality, they were not aware of the horror that had already befallen the campers. These are the tapes. Headquarters, this is Nash. Do you copy over? Space, over. We're about a mile in. There's no sign of our subjects. Copy that. Continue on. We'll be standing by. Copy that. Hold up, guys. It seems impossible these kids made it this far. What was that? I don't know. It sounded like a human voice. I've never heard anything like that. Do you see something? No. Nothing. Come on, let's keep moving. There it is. Lane! Matthew! Vince! April! Let's check the tents. I got blood here. Wendigo is a malevolent spirit, literally brought into life through what we consider one of the most ultimate acts of evil, cannibalism. They have been part and parcel of Native American culture since time immemorial. They normally start out as a human that becomes depraved and cannibalistic. And those cannibalistic tendencies make it turn into this monster. The Wendigo is insatiable. It wants flesh, it wants blood. It is never satisfied with, with the amount of what it can eat. All of its descriptions emphasize its monstrosity, its um, deviation from mankind. It can literally move between time and space to be where its victims are. And so when the Wendigo has its sights on you as a victim, there is no escape. Headquarters, this is Nash. We found the campsite, but there are no hikers. Base, this is Nash, do you copy? Base, this is Nash, do you copy? It's probably out of range. Go easy on that water, Dorsey. Actually, we should replenish. There's a stream 400 yards that way. Yeah, my GPS shows the same thing. Here. What? Boss, give us your camel pack. Oh, yeah, why don't I get that? There you go. Oh, thanks, buddy. Thanks, Boss, Dorsey. start cataloging. You got it. Dorsey, be quick. We're gonna need you back here. All right. Sure, send the new guy into the woods to get the water. Where's that stream? What the hell was that? Hello? Is that skin? I'm still not getting anything. Nash! Nash! What? Oh. Is it one of ours? Vince. No. What? This isn't a bear attack. No. 
That's definitely not a bear. It's not consistent with a bear at all. It's been chewed pretty clean. It's not crushed. There's something vicious out here in these woods. Dorsey. Who would do this? Do you see anything? And I see a lot of tracks, so I can't tell from what. Boss, check this out. It's a cave. I'm going in. Dorsey? Dorsey! Something's in here. I think that the Algonquin Indian tale of the Wendigo has more to do with mental health than it does with cannibalism. Wendigo psychosis can be characterized as a very extreme form of cabin fever. Typically what happens in a Wendigo psychosis is that somebody is trapped or isolated with other people for very, very long periods of time and they may have plenty of provisions to eat. And what happens in this syndrome is that a person will start to develop the belief that they're going to turn into a monster and then cannibalize the other people around them. And so it can become a very, very dangerous delusion. You can think of the Wendigo psychosis as a form of compulsion, and they believe that once they eat the human flesh that they're always going to want to eat it. They'll never get enough. But in a way, this can be similar to a syndrome such as drug addiction. Why are you hiding? Because I was afraid. Did you hear us? That can make noises that sound like people. What can make noises? Matthew, id. You're not making a lot of sense here. Lane, why don't you tell us what happened on the camping trip? We didn't know where we were going. And we got lost. And then we got really scared and we ran out of food. And that's when things got really, really bad. Matthew, what are you eating? It's, it's not another squirrel, is it? <gasps> what happened? It was chasing us. inside my head and it, it's like it's like an itch that I can't I can't scratch Matthew where's Vince what I don't know I'm where Vince is where is he I don't know you're starting to scare me we need you to talk that? about April okay what April needs medical attention we know I know right. no, we, we don't have, have it to get her off the mountain we're not getting her off this mountain lane we don't even know what we're gonna so do just leave her just leave her here to die no how long has it been since you had something to eat Oh, you're sick. Excuse you me? are sick, Matthew. You don't get it, do you? You are sick. You don't get it. You don't get it. Go! You just wait. Get out you of here, Matthew! 
April. April. See if I can go and find Dorsey. Be quick. Because when she wakes up, we gotta move back. It's getting to be too much for two people out there. We gotta bring in a bigger team. Give me two hours. Dorsey! Dorsey! Oh, my God. Nash! Nash, come in, Nash! There's something out here! Nash! Oh, he's coming back to get us! Come on! Come on! No! Get up! We gotta go! No, I'm not going out in those woods! We can still help him! Besides, you already heard he's dead! He's dead! Come on, there is still a chance to save him! No, I am not going out there! No, don't go. I'm gonna go no. check it out. Don't. Don't go. Don't go. two weeks ago. If anyone finds this tape, if anyone finds... Did 
Despite video evidence recovered from their search cams, the fatalities of rescuers Shelby Nash, Porter Voss, and Trent Dorsey were attributed to black bear attacks. Hikers April DeSoto and Vince Gabriel were later determined to have met the same fate. The bodies of Matthew Gall and Lane Corey were never recovered, and the search continues to this day. Tales of the Wendigo persist throughout the native lands of the Northeast, echoing through the mountains like an age-old question. Do they live among us? <laughs> So this is travel log number 30 in my ongoing tour of Aztec ruins in Mexico. I'm just waiting to check out the pyramids here. But, uh, excuse me, how do you say the name of this place? Teotihuacan. Teotihuacan? Gracias, gracias. Ah, it's just incredible here. Moving on to the next. Okay, hold on. Uh, I'm in a little village, Las Portales. Uh, I'm still in central Mexico, about 40 miles south of where my last video was. According to my map, this is the site of more ruins, but as you can see, it's like an old train depot or something. It's pretty cool though, I'll check it out. What the hell was that? That looks like there's another level up there. some kind of nest it's crazy up here I don't know what the hell's going on in here Creatures science refuses to recognize. There's something down there! But if our eyes see it, if our cameras capture it, does it exist? Them, they're monsters! Lost tapes. Do you believe? Hugh, the Serpent God. In the spring of 2008, Mexico City experienced a wave of ritualistic murders. Because the Mexican police did not possess a ritualistic crimes unit, they enlisted the help of the Enigma Corporation, a private security firm specializing in unusual cases. Team leader Noel Connor and specialist Elise Mooney were joined in the investigation by occult expert Dr. Nadja Santo. In the past two months, Mexico City's been hit with a rash of murders where the victims' hearts have been cut from their bodies. The local authorities think that it's uh, ritualistic. Look at the pictures. The bodies look staged. I'm not seeing any blood around the bodies. They must have been moved from the original murder site. Yeah, that's what the local police think. Somebody's trying to hide the murder site. Hey, Santo, what do you make of that? It looks like the Aztec numeral 52. What does that mean? Well, there's 52 years in an Aztec cycle. They believe the universe would collapse at the end of each cycle if the gods weren't strong enough. So every 52 years, a blood ceremony must be held to usher in a new era. I think either somebody's trying to repeat the past or start some sort of new cult. We need to find out more about these ceremonies and put a stop to it. The team was also provided the assistance of police informant Santiago Vargas, a petty thief with ties to suspected cult members. But as the investigation unfolded, 
it became apparent that this case would take them beyond ritual murder in Mexico's occult underground and into the realm of gods and monsters. These are their tapes. Where are these guys? Marzo would be here. He's wired ready. How do you know these guys anyway? Everybody knows Marzo. He's a powerful man here. Lucas Marzo, AKA El Marzo. Wealthy businessman who has ties to cult activity. Specifically the Santa Muerte cult, which is some sort of quasi-religion practiced by the drug traffickers in this area. There he is. That is Marzo. Who's the other guy? I, I, I don't know. I was hard to do the job, that is it. Be careful, it's very valuable. It was used by Aztec priests to cut the hearts from human sacrifices. Why do these guys need this particular dagger? They must have plenty of these things. They don't need this. They want it. Looks like you're on, buddy. I need the dagger. No, you don't. No, you tell them you don't have it yet. And you meet them tomorrow. this Connor it's a necessary evil we need to find out where these ceremonies are taking place no sé señores en este momento no la tengo señor pero está seguro está todo bien no tengo nada más tiempo I just need more time todavía tiempo no estás jugando no señor mañana mañana no hay mañana all right, Connor, I think he's had enough. Hold on just a second. tonight. Don't screw up this time. He gave him something. Hey man, you're right. Well, right. looks like we got our location. Los Portales. Where is this? It's a small town south of the city. There's nothing there. It's abandoned. It's a it's a train depot. So you'll be able to take us there, right? No. Our agreement was for me to bring you to Marzo. That's it. And you didn't read the fine print. What do Marcel mean when he said there's no tomorrow night? With each sacrifice they make, the power becomes greater. With the final ceremony, at the end of the cycle, tonight, they will be unstoppable. Tonight's the final sacrifice. If we don't get to this town and fast, someone's gonna die tonight, let's move. Quetzalcoatl is the name of a mythological being, a deity of the ancient Aztecs. We know that Quetzalcoatl was worshipped all around Central Mexico and Northern Central America because in so many of the temple ruins we find carvings and paintings and other depictions of the feathered or plumed serpent. Quetzalcoatl was the snake god of the Aztecs. A scaled serpent with a long and twisting body, big flashing eyes, bird wings with feathers. It was almost dragon-like in appearance. Certainly because it was a pinnacle god, it was feared. And then to have those attributes of animals that are not exactly calm in their presentation to human beings. Certainly the Aztecs were well aware that this was a god they did not mess with. Quiet night in Los Portales. This place is evil. You don't understand. This town was built on top of Aztec ruins. And anybody who comes here is putting his life in great danger. Relax, Vargas. Give him the knife, Santo. 
You know what to say at the door, right? Whoa. Drop the knife, Argus. Whoa, 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 whoa. I am done cooperating. You people don't understand. This evil is, is bigger and more powerful than you can even imagine. Argus, I will blow your head off if you do not drop that knife. I will not die here. Forget it, Mooney. What? He's no good to us if he doesn't cooperate. Argus, with a knife. I'll let you go. Ah! You all right? I'm fine. Great, there goes our way in. We have the location, we'll find another way. I got the dagger. Let's move. All right, here's the deal. We're looking for something that'll stick with the Mexican government. Anybody on an altar, attempted murder. Anybody held against their will, kidnapping. Anything less, it's your judgment call. Anything more, we're gonna need to call in for backup. Good to go? Good to go. We'll take the ground floor. Santo, you take the top side. Let's move. Quetzalcoatl had several different legends by which he disappeared from the Aztecs. From that time, he was supposed to return in 52 years. The Aztecs thought of calendars as a circular thing that went in cycles. They believed that every 52 years, everything hung in the balance, and certain special sacrifices had to be made or the world would be plunged into chaos. To the Aztecs, life flowed from death and this concept led to increasing human sacrifice to appease the deities, among them Quetzalcoatl. The beating heart was generally cut out by a dagger that was either obsidian or flint. They would take the beating heart out of the body and use the blood to, to christen both the altar and the temple steps. You ready? that? It sounds like the ritual's already begun. Santo, we're in. Looks like it's clear up here. I'm headed down. Copy. Santo, you see anything? Santo, come in over. I'm not getting anything.
What happened? I don't know. But it doesn't look like anyone survived. Zone. I think whatever happened here was way more than these guys bargained for. Where's Santo? Oh God, Santo! Cover now. Follow me. Move. Have you ever seen anything like that before? No. Try the night vision. Anything? Nothing. Oh my god. I don't know what that thing is, but it's huge. Where? 12 o'clock. Where is it? I don't know. All right. We need to get down to that altar. I need to get my hands on that dagger. What the hell for? That dagger had something to do with getting this thing here, so hopefully it'll have something to do with getting rid of it. At least I don't think... Do you want to argue with me, or do you want to get out of here? Thing is, it's playing a good game of hide and seek. Right here, waiting for you. Behind you! The exact nature and fate of the creature encountered by the Enigma team remains unknown. The train depot in Los Portales was burned to the ground by the Mexican government, and no evidence outside of human remains was recovered. Lucas Marzo was posthumously convicted for all crimes related to the cult's activity, including the death of Dr. Nadja Santo. Agents Noel Connor and Elise Mooney both managed to escape with minimal injuries. There is no question that Quetzalcoatl and the many other deities of Aztec mythology will live on in the cultural fabric of North America. The real question is, do they live among us?
Sector One, is your post clear? All clear. No signs of any um. You guys as nervous as I am about the feds coming to get us business or what? Bruce, what's back there? Do we have intruders? I don't know. There's something out there, though. You see? You see? Guys? Hey, guys? There are creatures science refuses to recognize. There's something down there! But if our eyes see it, if our cameras capture it, does it exist? Then they're monsters. Lost tapes. Do you believe? Beast of Bray Road. I'm ready. In May 2009, a Wisconsin-based militia group came under attack from what they believed were covert federal operatives. In order to expose the assault and hopefully thwart any future attacks, they decided to grant an exclusive interview to investigative reporter Randall Steiner and his cameraman Mike Monroe. Any attempt to contact anybody on the outside while you are with us will be met with severe consequences. The two were driven to a secret rendezvous point to meet with the group's elusive leader, Brian Kavanaugh. This interview, deep in the northern woods, would become the setting for an encounter more primal and ferocious than any of them could have ever expected. These are their tapes. We're coming in now. Stand down, Bobby. You stand down. Who the hell are these guys? It's the reporter. It's all cool. Stay sharp. Don't mess up. No mistakes. We're moving on. Let's go. Is this where Kavanaugh is? Shut up. Keep moving. Let's go. What's up? Let's do this thing. So what do you want to know? Wait a second. Um, no disrespect, but we came all the way out here to interview Kavanaugh. I am Brian Kavanaugh. Right. So what's going on here, Mr. Kavanaugh? We're ordinary citizens of this state practicing our Second Amendment right to form a militia. Our intentions are to wrest power from big government and return it to the rightful control of the individual through any means necessary. I know you've got a lot of surveillance cameras here. Uh, why is that? Since the incident two nights ago, we've added cameras on the tree lines and all around the cabin. We've also added gun scope cams. The Fed's actions will be documented. What makes you so sure it's the Fed's? You think you live in a safe little world with justice and laws? I'll show you how much your government obeys its own laws. Follow me. Move it. more like an animal attack than something a human would do. Government issue. Can easily make those markings. This is what they're capable of. 
Most descriptions of the Beast of Bray Road portray it as well over six feet tall. It's been described as having a wolf's head with a human-like torso. The Beast of Bray Road first came to be known around my own hometown of Elkhorn, Wisconsin. Most report a bipedal creature. Um, sometimes they'll see it crouched or on four legs by the side of the road and then it stands up and either runs toward them or runs away on two legs. We've had reports from Wisconsin, Michigan, Minnesota for decades. Anywhere where there are farmland, where there's forest, we're hearing stories of strange mystery canids. I think what scares people when they encounter one of these creatures, first of all, is their sheer size. They outweigh most people. They have huge fangs, which are, would obviously be very good at tearing flesh. They have long claws, larger than a normal dogs or, or wolves. They always are described as very muscular, so they look like they are very strong and could really inflict some damage on a person if they were able to. The beast of Bray Road is often compared to a werewolf type creature, a creature that's mysterious and yet bloodthirsty. This is what they're capable of. The hell was that? They're trying to put us off balance before they make their move. It's the feds. They're out there. Tom, we just lost a signal from Bobby's post. I need you to go to Sector 3 and look for him. Roger that, Kavanaugh. Approaching Sector 3 now. Bobby, it's Tom. You better not be screwing around. Bobby, is that you? Okay, they must be coming from the west side. What camera position is that? That's 50 yards out. That's way too fast for one person. It's a raid. Let's go. You, come with me. You, stay here. Remember, you are being watched. If you have anything to do with this siege, I will kill you myself. Let's go. Bray Road Beast is definitely in the folklore of werewolves nowadays. It's seen as a modern werewolf. It's called an American werewolf. Werewolves do seem to be predators. In folklore, when people have turned into wolves, they have gone on rampages where they kill livestock and sometimes people. Wolves have formidable attributes at their disposal. These include speed, agility, intelligence, strategy, and they have different types of teeth in their mouth that come as kind of a Swiss Army knife package to use against their prey. The canines are used to puncture the skin and to hold on to prey. The carnassial teeth are the shearing teeth, and those are used to shear flesh, like scissors. And then behind that, you have the molar teeth, and those are for crushing the meat and bones. If a wolf did attack a human with a, the intent to kill, then the human would be in a lot of trouble. Nancy, you 
stay on point. We don't know how many feds are out here. You, you come with me. I'm not sure exactly what's happening, but I'm pretty sure we're under attack. Oh my God. Tom. Oh my God. What the hell happened to you? What the hell is this? What is this? Yes, he's like God. What the hell happened to him? Bobby, what the hell happened to him? I don't know what happened. I don't know if it was the feds. I don't know if it was an animal. What do you mean the animal? What do you mean you don't know? You're the know. only one. It was, just, it was dark. I couldn't see anything. I took a shot. I couldn't see it. We gotta get out of here. We gotta get back to the cabin. No, Look at this. Look at this. This looks just like your jacket. Are you saying to me I killed him? How am you I supposed to know? How am I supposed to trust you? Tell me. You I tell me. <laughs> Early accounts of the Beast of Bray Road cite a lone terrifying creature. But later reports suggest the horrifying possibility that actual packs of these creatures may be roaming the American Midwest. Bear witness to a band of bloodthirsty beasts when Lost Tapes continues. Paris, Michigan, 1938. A fisherman on the banks of the Muskegon River was startled by what appeared to be a pack of large feral dogs emerging from the woods. He grabbed his hunting rifle and fired a warning shot. The animals retreated, except the largest one, who stood up on its hind legs and cast a glare that sent shivers down the fisherman's spine. His story is just one of many reported encounters with a creature that shares many similarities to the Beast of Bray Road. Are you saying to me I killed him? How am you I supposed to know? How am I supposed to trust you? Tell me! You I tell me! That's coming from where that surveillance camera went down. Let's go! Come on! Come on! Let's go! Get up! Get up! Grab that camera! Come on! These are my people. Whoever did this is gone.
Somebody tip the government off. Do you have anything to do with this? Of course not, man. I've been with you the whole time. What about Randall? No, he's been in the cabin, man. We already checked him for a phone. Did he sneak in another one? Uh, no, I don't Does think... he have a phone? Yeah, I think her boss gave him a phone. What? I don't know if he did this time. Uh... Yeah, he wanted a story. Now he's gonna get a story. No, man, he didn't have anything to do with this. This is Let's crazy. Let's go. We're going back to the cabin. Let's go. Not sure by who or by what, but we are definitely under attack. I'm out of here. Get back here, cameraman. Oh! Oh! Where you gonna go, huh? Oh! You think you're safe out here? These are my woods and I will find you. Help! Somebody help me! Oh, oh thank God! Oh, please! Please be alive! Please! Come on! Oh God! Give me somewhere! Where are the keys? We're gonna finish this. No! Alright, this is the last cover before we get to the cabin. If it's a setup, they're gonna cut us down between here and there. I need you to keep filming no matter what, you understand me? No matter what! I need the news to get footage of this illegal raid. I don't dance the feds, man. That didn't sound human. Come on. That's our chance. Let's go. Let's go. Here first. Why? Because you're a shield. That's why. Let's go. I'm not really sure what's going on outside this cabin. I know we're in danger at this point. I don't know what we're going to do. All I know is I need help. I told you not to contact the outside. That was the deal you broke the agreement. We're being surrounded. I'm not gonna be caught in this cabin. There's not gonna be another way to go. Let's go. Out. Take it easy, man. He's not a part of this. Stop it, Let, Let, Let him go, man. Let him go, man. Come on. Come on, he didn't do Ellie. this. Back off or the reporter dies. I killed him, I swear to God, I'll kill him. Dude, it's not us. Retreat. It's not us. Based on information provided by cameraman Mike Monroe, who survived the incident and crawled his way to the safety of a fire road, federal agents did raid the Wisconsin Minute Militia two days later. There they discovered the ravaged bodies of four paramilitary group members, as well as journalist Randall Steiner. The cause of death was simply listed as wolf attack. But since federal agents and local animal control failed to ultimately capture any such animals, we are left to wonder, do they live among us?
Come on, let's go. Wait, 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 hold on a second. These have to be more than just directions. Well, I mean, yeah, it's just like the promoter guy said. All you have to do is just follow them. Kind of like, you know, following the yellow brick road. How deep is this place? Keep moving. Yo, what's up? This is cute and mysterious. What am I, some kind of zero or something? You're giving her the IP access. Dude, I'm her boyfriend. Dude, babe, don't even worry about it, okay? Like, just give me the camera and I will film everything. And it'll be just like you were there. Come on. It's only because I busted my b to get here. Have fun. <laughs> Creatures science refuses to recognize. There's something down there! But if our eyes see it, if our cameras capture it, does it exist? Them, they're monsters! Lost tapes. Do you believe? Reptilian. In the fall of 2008, an alarming rise in the number of missing teens prompted the New York City Mayor's Office to assemble a special task force. Detectives John Sloan and Rhonda Ramirez were assigned to investigate reports that the missing teens were linked to secret roving underground parties in the vast abandoned subway tunnels beneath the city. Beautiful lady like you doing around these parts. Think you can get me into one of your parties? Think you give me that math? <laughs> no, I'm serious. You give me your phone number, and I'll make sure you get a text, your own personal invite, and all the details you need to follow the yellow brick road. Yeah, I got a better idea. Sloan and Ramirez went undercover with hidden cameras and approached small-time party promoter Stephen Spike Mills in order to force his cooperation and lead them to the source of these disappearances. These are their tapes. Just a promoter. They hired me to get the word out, to tell people. Okay, who hired you? There was a post on the internet. I snatched it up. I never seen the dudes. I have no idea who they are. Okay, well, if you won't tell me who they are, then at least tell me how can we get there. There's coded signs scrawled down on the subway walls. No, that's bull. We've been down there. Brooklyn, Bronx, Manhattan, Queens. There's nothing there. They're there. You're just looking with the wrong eyes. Okay? Spike, we got a lot of kids disappearing here. You know what you get for accessory to kidnapping? Five years. I didn't kidnap anyone. I don't understand what you guys want from me. I'll tell you what's gonna happen. You're gonna take us down there. Tonight. Great, thank you. High five. Ramirez? Good? Camera check? Yeah. Sure you're gonna be all right in those tight jeans? Oh, that's funny. <laughs> hey guys, check this out. Okay, so you see this one right here? This means at the bottom of the stairs we go right. Okay, all right, let's go. Down to the right, That's yeah. where all the magic happens. Go. Okay. Reptilians or reptoids are said to be races of intelligent creatures which come from extraterrestrial worlds or parallel dimensions. They live primarily underground or in caves and tunnels, that sort of thing. A common appearance described in the encounter literature is of a being six to seven feet tall that walks upright like a human being, but probably has a reptilian head, reptilian eyes, and scaly skin, like a lizard skin. The reptilian is not one of the alien types that's thought to be warm and cuddly, but is more sinister, more beastly, if you will. They seem to have great shape-shifting abilities, and we can speculate that they could take on any form through various means in order to disguise themselves. 
Reptilians have uh, nothing on their minds so much as a worldwide conspiracy to take over the planet. You know, and the way things work is the more secret you make something, the more people want in. And these parties have blown up since they started. They're in all five boroughs, different place, every night. Hey, can you shut up? Why are you so mean to me? I don't understand. We got off on the wrong foot. Hold up. Hold up. You guys hear that? Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. It's a dead end up there, Spike. This better not be a setup. Spike. Spike, what the hell are you doing? Relax, okay? It's okay, let's just keep going. Hey, how's it going, man? I'm Spike, remember? We, oh, no, no, it's cool, they're with me. Just show them your hands. Just get stamp. Oh, you got the VIP stamp, Slum. I must think you're cute. I think it's the pants. All right. All right, as I promised, party is right through there. Perfect, two o'clock. Hey, Spike, what's down that hallway? No idea and no interest in finding out. Now, where's your sense of adventure, Spike? I got a feeling the bad guys are that way. Can I just say really quick, these are not people that you guys want to mess with. I just want to throw that out. Look, if you can't handle it, you can crawl back to wherever you came from. We'll deal with you later. Fine. Yeah, well, then you can forget immunity. Lead the way. Good choice. It's not like you guys are gonna find your way out of here without me anyway. Shut up. Guys, come on. Let's go to the party. Don't look at him. Just keep walking. I don't know if this is really a good idea, to be honest. Don't you think it's strange that they're not following us? Either there's nothing to find in here, this is exactly where they wanted us. What the hell? Stay here! Stop. He said stay here. No, no, no. He said, he said stay. Reptilians could have the same abilities as natural reptiles. Reptiles have specialized adaptations for living underground. They have uh, sensory cells in their eyes that allow them to see very well at night. Um, they can be very aggressive predators from the large lizards, and there's a group of lizards called the varanid lizards, and that would include the Komodo dragon. These are predators that display an ambush style of prey capture. Once it gets a grasp on a prey item, it doesn't need venom, it doesn't need constriction, it's just not going to let go. years of modern astronomy has taught us that the universe is not only enormous with 
10,000 billion billion stars that we can see in an, an even larger number of planets, but it's all made of the same stuff. The real estate out there in space is pretty much like the real estate right here on Earth. So if there's life here, well, why wouldn't there be life there? Physicist Stephen Hawking points out that every time a more advanced society meets a less advanced society, it usually doesn't work out so well for the less advanced society. And so he figures maybe we shouldn't have any contact with aliens because it might not work out well for us. Holy Oh my God. Whoa. Shh. They could be watching. Wait, you gotta check this out. They're everywhere. You went that way. Follow me. No, 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 no. Look, that's way above my pay grade. I'm not leaving without Sloan. Okay, just call for backup, okay? Are you sure Sloan's this way? Shh, shh. Us. They're following us. Oh, oh. Let's get out of here right now. I'm done. Why don't you just use your camera to read the signs? There's stuff written everywhere. Well, what do they say? I don't know what they say. There's a whole language. I only know directions. Okay, well, I guess the only way is down. seen enough bodies come on let's come go. here put your camera on your hands that's the VIP stamp same as Sloan's why do they all have those marks I don't, I don't know let's go let's, hey on, let's get out of here it must be how they pick their victims Sloan Sloan What is that? What is that? Do you see that? Ew. What the hell is that? Stay here. What? Stay here. What are you talking about? I realize. Sloan. Oh my gosh, Sloan. Hold on, Sloan. I'm gonna get you out of there. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna cut you loose. Ramirez. Ramirez. A second more. Yeah? I'm almost there. I'm gonna get you out of here. I'm out of here. Mike, I need you to help me with Sloan. Yes. Ramirez. Ramirez. Sloan. Get out of here. Get out of here. They're everywhere. No, I'm Go. Not. There are some conspiracy theories that claim that the reptilians are able to disguise themselves as humans and that reptilians are part of every royal bloodline on the planet and are part of the bloodline of every U.S. president, that they have insinuated themselves into the ruling class of the human race so that they can control us for their own ends.
We could be a food source for reptilians who might consider us to be a lower life form the same way we look at livestock. What? What was that? What? What? Oh, let's play. Get it together. Press them. All right, be cool, be cool, be cool. Okay, this, this one's left, and this is... Oh, God. Wait, no, no, no! Should've called for work. these things. Trust me, you don't want to know. No. Please. Don't move on, we'll blow your head off! I said please! of Stephen Mills and undercover agents John Sloan and Rhonda Ramirez were never recovered. Police confiscated the group's surveillance equipment, but no arrests were made. Citing budget cuts, top brass within the police department and mayor's office have closed down the task force until further notice. But the secret underground parties continue to occur throughout the country, and the epidemic of missing teens grows. Are these creatures involved in a larger conspiracy? And do they live among us? Ah!